yourself or a plant. speaker right now. He goes by the name of Mr. Walker Chandler. He's a criminal defense lawyer here in Georgia. So please 
Round of applause for Mr. Walker Chandler, please! Woo! Thank you. Uh, let me think. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, I had a, a lot of different things that I thought we'd talk about, talk about today. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of people think we're getting toward what they call a tipping point because we're so close to uh, achieving the goal of basically having marijuana be legalized or re-legalized is yeah. what I like to call it. Yes. Um, I, think that, I, I think that we ought to constantly remind ourselves of who made marijuana illegal here in Georgia. And it was a bunch of white guys in that, in that building right there who didn't know what the hell they were doing. Woo! Of course, that's true of all most politicians don't. They know what they're doing, but they don't care what they're doing because they, the one thing they want is re-election. And so that's the thing that we have to always be thinking about is how can we threaten their re-election as we reach. So we have, uh, I thought about the three P's are politicians, preachers, and parties. Okay, politicians is always a problem because re-election is what they want. They don't care about morality and they don't care about science. They only care about re-election. So obviously we have to threaten their re-election. Preachers, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we, we're going to have to get out here and talk to people. And one of the groups of people who are talking to congregations every weekend are preachers. Now, I would submit to you, well, let's switch over to parties for a second. There is one basic socialist party that runs the state of Georgia. It has two wings, a Democrat party wing and a Republican party wing, but they're both the same. Most of the older Republicans were once Democrats because that's where the votes were. And they, and they don't care, but they, so they just have to go where the votes are. But the Libertarian Party, I ran as the Lieutenant Governor candidate in 90 and 94 and the Attorney General candidate in 98. And of course the Libertarian Party never gets more than about 4 to 6 percent of the vote because the other parties have what are called ballot access laws to hamper any competition. That big socialist party that runs the state has ballot access laws so that people are not really given a choice. Now, preachers. I would contend that even though there are a lot of atheists are in the Libertarian Party, the Libertarian Party is the only essentially Christian party that there is, and I, the Republicans notwithstanding. The, the very basis of Christianity is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yes. And and so these are and these are all things I'm going to close in a few minutes or a short time uh, with a, with a, a follow up on this. But that do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Would you rush forward and if you saw somebody doing something you thought was not good for them, like eating something you didn't think they should eat, or looking at something that they didn't, like, would you slap it out of their hands? No, that wouldn't be the Christian thing, would it? No. no. But that is exactly what they are willing to do is they are not Christian. The Republicans and Democrats are not Christians and they should be challenged at that at every possible opportunity. And the preachers, all, all preachers should be challenged openly and in the middle of a, of a sermon. You preach if they, good now. If they come, if, Amen, they, if they basically are saying, uh, you know, marijuana is a terrible thing, it's wait a minute, you know, who are you to say that? Where, did, where is it written in the Bible? Or is that just your prejudice that's saying that? And now you're trying to put those words in the mouth of God. Now, I'd like to talk for a minute about lawyers. I'm a criminal defense lawyer. A lot of you have had problems with criminal defense issues that relating to marijuana. Let's see if I can make that. And, uh, and, what, and I've had, I'll get calls. I've been in normal for years, and I'll get these calls about people that will ask me about, can I represent them in some far corner of the state? And the one thing that I always tell people when you're, if you have a marijuana case, is don't hire a lawyer who thinks marijuana should be illegal. There's no point in that, right? There's no point of going into somebody's office who thinks you've done something wrong. You haven't done something wrong. You have been caught by a government who has a wrong policy, all right? And so why should you finance that ignorance on the part of a lawyer? He, that guy might be the same fellow that turns around and contributes to the campaigns of Democrats and Republicans. 
that's terrible. So try to make sure that when you pick a lawyer, that uh, you pick one who's in favor of legalization. I have a problem with liars, and, and this goes back to politicians. When I, was, when I was young and in college, we thought that marijuana would be legal far, far a long time ago, by the end of the 1970s. We thought that things would come about, and, it would, and, and as we came into power, as we came into power and positions of influence, that the laws would dissolve. But because of the ballot access laws and because of the willingness and ability of, of the politician class to lie, the liars only are the ones who get elected. The people like Newt Gingrich, who says, oh, I deeply regret having smoked marijuana. Mm -hmm. Hell, he doesn't deeply regret it. He just regrets that people can prove it. Mm -hmm. The Al Gore, who deeply, who regrets that he did it. He doesn't regret his hippie days. Uh, he just regrets that people found out about it. And it goes down to, to George Bush, the, the Obama. Obama was apparently a marijuana dealer when he was in high school. And in his own, seriously, and in his own book talks about, basically admits he had, he used cocaine. And, but those same people will sign bills sending people to prison. Those same people will be silent when people are being sent to prison. Those same people will want, they will promise up front that they're going to go easy on the marijuana smokers and then once they get into office, just like Obama, they, they don't do a damn thing. And the worst was Jimmy Carter, the great Jimmy Carter, whose little statue we see over there, who essentially promised mm. that marijuana would be decriminalized. But as soon as he got in office, and as soon as the SOB thought that he might run for re-election, then he backed away from that, because that's all they really care about. Now, we are reaching a tipping point now. We are reaching this tipping point because what do the votes in Washington and Colorado prove? They prove that the laws against marijuana are not about science. And they are not about morality. They are only about majority vote. Now as such, we, have, we can see that marijuana is going to be legalized. And the only, here in Georgia, the only question is when. Mm -hmm. And all politicians understand that the only question is when. Not if, but when. Yep. So what, 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 one of the analogies that I've come up with is those, the politicians and the police and the courts and the prosecutors are all in the same position that German soldiers were in in the spring of 1945. When it was obvious that the Allies were going to win the war. It was obvious that the American troops were coming to overthrow the Nazi government. It was obvious that it was lost, but nevertheless, they were in the trenches shooting American soldiers. Now that's the same position that the politicians, the judges, the prosecutors, and the police are in today. And so we should be constantly saying, why are you doing this? Why are you abusing people for no purpose? They can, they may be thought back when they were younger that they were doing the right thing. Now, the, uh, the, the sheet is off the Statue of Liberty. Um, now, let me end by saying that I have, uh, in my old age, reread a book called uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. We, are, we need to win friends and we need to influence people. And we need to influence a lot of people so that they can threaten those politicians not to vote for them. The drug war issue is an important issue because it basically unmasks whether the person being asked is willing to lie or not. And so we have to, but, but on the other hand, do we not need to approach people in the ways that